So we're talking about rebuilding a movement pattern, movement plan, movement system, especially after injury or trauma. You know that we are big fans of rich sensory motor input. I want you to feel what's going on, right? And the more I make your brain have to pay attention to what's going on with your body, the better we're getting. So it's not always about strength, right? It's about, hey, can I challenge this position? And it's not always, again, not always about strengthening. Now, we know that there are several ways to challenge load, right, or challenge position. The first one is to add load. So one of the things that it's useful to have in the back of your head is when you've been injured is to default to something that looks like a basic linear progression. Progression. And the idea here is, and it's, it could be simple, five by five, right? Or 10 sets of three, whatever, whatever you wanna do, or 10 sets of five. It really doesn't matter, except that the idea is, this is a simple way to begin to show those tissues some exposure. So five by five, for example, which is one of our favorite templates, right, this old as, old as dirt, is to be able to do a movement for five sets of five. And in that, keep in mind that I could manage tempo, I could put an isometric in there, right, there's a whole, I could load it, there's a whole lot of things in richness in that. But that the next time I hit that five by five, I'm gonna challenge a little bit more with a little bit of load. So maybe I have to hold a two pound weight or a five pound weight or a barbell plus two and a half. So it's an easy way of getting those tissues used to loading and then progressively making it heavier and heavier. And by the way, it gets heavy fast, even if we're just doing sort of one or two pound jumps or a kilo jumps. Now when we do this, wait for it, three to five times a week, is really the goal. I want lots and lots of exposure. So typically with us, so that if you have a knee injury, I have a knee injury right now, turns out that I'm gonna squat a little bit every day and I'm gonna just be exposing that. Now, this isn't always the simplest way to load or not the most appropriate sometimes when we need to protect something. So we think, hey, this would actually just be a load as a way of challenging position, right? But one of the easiest ways to do it is to actually add a little cardio respiratory demand. So as soon as I have to breathe hard, then suddenly this richness kicks, on, kicks in. I'm struggling to come back to some very, very basic control elements while having to manage my respiration and, and high heart rates. And one of our, what's happened is that we've taken our basic linear progression model, mapped it, with this cardiorespiratory model, and what we born is something we call the tick. And we called it the tick because when we first did this, we did it with front squats with 100 kilos and assault bike sprints or watt bike sprints at four to 500 watts, and you get off and your legs would feel like ticks. But what I'm showing you here is that we can do a minute, one minute, of some kind of sort of steady state or a monostructural piece, right? This could be, uh, for me, a salt bike or an echo bike where I'm using three limbs, or I can put someone on a skateboard, I can protect them. But giving someone an opportunity to basically do a minute of some hard work, and then in the off minute, I have to perform my basic linear progression, or I have to go slow. So if I do arms and a leg, and then I have to pause and do three pause squats at my available range, that's very difficult all of a sudden. And one of the reasons I love this is it makes our athletes have to upregulate their feeling and manage their breathing in these positions. Because when you walk into most rehab places, we're seeing people kind of do one rep max style exercises, and the only way to progress that is to make it heavier and heavier. So a simple way of getting a lot of blood flow, getting a lot of work in, and challenging that nervous system, challenging that biomotor system, is by adding a little cardiorespiratory demand. Of course, we could do that with metabolic demand. Hey, just do 20 of those in a row, sets of 20, right? There's so many ways to challenge position, but the last of which is speed. So well before we get speed here, we're gonna see something for me and from everyone that we work with that looks based on basic linear progressions, predicated on a movement or two that we think is 
kind of crucial. And remember, the shoulder doesn't do that many things. How many choices do you have? The hip doesn't do that many things. So I can, there's a million sort of corrective skill transfer exercises, but ultimately starting to get into the language of actual movement again is gonna be crux. Basic linear progressions matched with a monostructural piece, wig back and forth until the athlete is done and tired. We get a little cardiorespiratory demand, a little circulation, and it's a really, really simple way of making easy things that just put athletes to sleep, smoke them. So, hey, all you have to do is hold 300 watts with just uh, you know, a couple limbs, then do this very simple low-level, high-level, high squat to a pause with breathing. Let me know how that goes for you. This is the tick.